In this video, we will discuss the possibility of $1,500 stimulus payments specifically for those receiving Social Security and SSDI. Many people are wondering if these funds will be available and how they could provide much needed support. We'll begin by looking at the latest updates on this potential stimulus. You'll find out what government officials are saying and what new proposals might be on the table. We'll explain who is eligible for these payments, so you can understand if you qualify. Next, we will discuss how these stimulus funds could impact your current benefits. It's important to know how additional payments may affect your finances and what that means for your budget. We'll also talk about the timing of these payments. When can you expect to see these funds if they are approved? We'll share insights on the timeline based on recent news and announcements. Finally, we will give you tips on what steps to take if you are eligible for these payments. This includes any actions you might need to follow to ensure you receive the full amount. To understand the buzz around potential new stimulus funds, we first need to look at the current situation. As many of you know, the past few years have been challenging for everyone, but especially for those on fixed incomes like Social Security and SSDI. Inflation has been hitting hard, with everyday essentials like groceries, utilities, and healthcare becoming more expensive. While there have been cost-of-living adjustments, COLAs, to Social Security benefits, many recipients feel these increases haven't kept pace with the rising costs they're facing. Sarah, a Social Security recipient, shares her experience, it's been tough. Even with the COLA increases, I find myself stretching my budget more and more each month. An extra boost would really help make ends meet. Sarah's experience is echoed by many across the country. This financial strain has led to calls for additional support, similar to the stimulus payments we saw during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. But is there any substance to these calls? Let's break it down. You might have seen headlines or social media posts claiming that a new $1,500 stimulus payment is on the way for Social Security and SSDI recipients. These rumors have spread like wildfire, giving hope to many who are struggling. But where did these rumors come from? The origin of this specific $1,500 figure can be traced back to several factors. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the government issued several rounds of stimulus payments, some of which were around this amount. This has set a precedent in people's minds. Additionally, there have been various proposals in Congress for additional support for seniors and those on fixed incomes. While none have specifically mentioned a $1,500 payment, the discussions around these proposals have fueled speculation. Several online petitions calling for additional payments to Social Security recipients have gained traction, with some specifically mentioning amounts in the $1,400 to $15 range. Sometimes, announcements about cost-of-living adjustments get misinterpreted as new, additional payments rather than increases to existing benefits. It's important to note that as of now, there is no official plan or approved legislation for a new $1,500 stimulus payment specifically for Social Security and SSDI recipients. However, that doesn't mean the idea is completely off the table. Let's look at what's actually being discussed in Washington. While there isn't a concrete plan for a $1,500 stimulus payment, there are several proposals and discussions in Congress that aim to provide additional support to Social Security and SSDI recipients. The Social Security Expansion Act, proposed by Senator Bernie Sanders and several co-sponsors, aims to increase Social Security benefits by $2,000 a year for all recipients. It would be funded by lifting the cap on payroll taxes for high-income earners. The Social Security Enhancement and Protection Act focuses on long-term solvency of Social Security and proposes a modest benefit increase for all beneficiaries. It also aims to improve the annual cost of living adjustment formula. The Supplemental Security Income Restoration Act aims to update and improve the SSI program by increasing the federal benefit rate in adjusting income and asset limits for SSI eligibility. There's also been discussion of a COVID-19 emergency social security cost of living adjustment, which would be a one-time emergency COLA to address pandemic-related inflation. It's crucial to understand that while these proposals are being discussed, none of them have been passed into law. The legislative process can be long and complex, with many proposals never making it to a vote. Now that we've looked at some of the proposals on the table, let's talk about the realities of passing new legislation especially when it comes to Social Security and federal benefits. 
Passing any new law, particularly one that involves significant spending, requires several steps. A bill must be introduced in either the House of Representatives or the Senate, then assigned to relevant committees for review, debate, and possible amendments. If it passes committee, the bill moves to a floor vote in the chamber where it was introduced. If it passes one chamber, the process repeats in the other chamber of Congress. If there are differences between the House and Senate versions, a conference committee works to reconcile them. Both chambers must pass the identical final version, and then the president can sign the bill into law or veto it. This process can take months or even years, and many bills never make it through all these steps. When it comes to Social Security and federal benefits, there are additional challenges. Any increase in benefits or new payments must be funded, which can be a significant hurdle in budget negotiations. There are often differing opinions on how to address Social Security's long term funding and benefit levels, which can lead to gridlock. Congress deals with numerous issues simultaneously, and sometimes other urgent matters can take precedence. Dr. Emily Rodriguez, a political analyst, offers her insight while there's often bipartisan agreement that Social Security recipients need support, the devil is in the details. How to fund it, who exactly should receive additional aid, and how it fits into broader budget and social policy, these are all points of contention that can slow down or halt legislation. So, while there are indeed discussions and proposals aimed at providing additional support to Social Security and SSDI recipients, The path to turning these ideas into reality is far from straightforward. It's important to stay informed about these developments without banking on them as guaranteed outcomes. When discussing potential stimulus funds or benefit increases, it's crucial to understand the broader economic context. Several economic factors play a significant role in shaping policies around Social Security and federal benefits. Recent years have seen higher than usual inflation rates. Which erodes the purchasing power of fixed incomes like Social Security benefits. It's a key driver behind calls for additional support. While Social Security has annual cost of living adjustments, COLAs, these are based on broad measures of inflation. Some argue that these adjustments don't accurately reflect the spending patterns of seniors and disabled individuals. Large stimulus spending during the pandemic has increased the federal deficit. Which makes some lawmakers hesitant to approve additional large scale payments. The long term solvency of Social Security is an ongoing concern, and any new spending proposals need to be balanced against the program's long term sustainability. The strength of the job market affects payroll tax revenues, which fund Social Security, and wage growth, especially for high earners, impacts the program's funding. Many Social Security and SSDI recipients are also Medicare beneficiaries. And rising healthcare costs put additional strain on fixed incomes. Understanding these economic factors helps explain why there's ongoing debate about providing additional support to Social Security and SSDI recipients. It's a complex balancing act between addressing immediate needs and ensuring long term stability of these crucial programs. While we wait to see if any new support materializes, there are steps that Social Security and SSDI recipients can take now to improve their financial situation. It's important to stay informed by keeping up with reliable news sources for updates on benefit changes and potential legislation. Be wary of unverified claims on social media about new payments or benefits. Make sure you're receiving all the benefits you're entitled to and check if you qualify for additional programs like SNAP. Food stamps, or housing assistance. Look for areas where you can reduce expenses and consider using budgeting apps or tools specifically designed for those on fixed incomes. If you're able, consider part time work to supplement your income, but be aware of income limits that could affect your benefits. Many nonprofit organizations offer free financial counseling for seniors and individuals with disabilities. They can help you make the most of your current benefits and income. Let your congressional representatives know about your experiences and support for various proposals. Your voice can make a difference in shaping policy. Many communities have programs to help with utilities, food, or other necessities, so check with your local area agency on aging or disability support organizations. If you haven't started receiving benefits yet, carefully consider the best time to start based on your individual circumstances. For couples, there may be strategies to maximize your combined benefits. Remember, while it's important to hope for and advocate for additional support, 
it's equally crucial to take proactive steps with the resources currently available to you.